travelers, let's talk about Fuji. So it's been one week now since we've been back from Mount Fuji, so we thought we would give a nice concise review concerning Willer Express and Mount Fuji. We are going to give our pros and cons to going on a Fuji tour with Willer Express. We're trying to stay away from things that they really couldn't control like the weather and the terrain, um, but we're just going to focus on things that we thought that they could have done better and things that we thought they did really well. Pro number one. Good pacing. When we first started our hike up the mountain, um, we were actually a little bit annoyed with our tour guides because it seemed like we were just going so, so slow, like too slow. We were basically like shuffling up the mountain. But when we got to the top and we still felt like a little bit of energy and we didn't feel like we had any symptoms of altitude sickness, we realized that it was actually a great thing that we went as slow as we did. It really worked to our benefit and it helped us get up there faster than some of the people that actually were like flying by us. Pro number two. Navigation. So going with Willer Express, we felt like they um, had our best interest in mind concerning getting to the top of the mountain. This really came into play the second day as we made the morning ascent to the actual summit for the sunrise. And the line going up on the typical trail, I can't remember the name of the trail, was like backed up. It was like bumper to bumper with people. You could see their headlights, so it was really, really busy. And based on the time we left, our tour guide said, I don't know that we're gonna make it to the top for the sunrise. So they had an alternative route that they were able to take us on that avoided a lot of that. Still got us to the top in time, still were able to see the sunrise. So I feel like had we gone on our own or with someone else, we wouldn't have had that option. Um, so being able to use an alternative trail and have better navigation was definitely a plus for me. Pro number three. Peace of mind. If you are a planner like Caleb here, um, going with Willer might not necessarily be something that you need, but if you're someone like me who doesn't really know how to plan, I've never really been good at planning trips. Willer Express basically does everything for you, which is great. You basically just meet up with your tour group, you sign in, you get on the bus, and then you're good to go. When you sign up for the tour, there is the option of even renting equipment to hike up the mountain with. So right before we got to the fifth station, we stopped at a rental equipment store and the people that had chosen that option were able to pick up a backpack filled with all sorts of things, raincoats and hiking sticks and headlamps. And we were actually able to rent headlamps because we forgot to bring flashlights. Yeah. It definitely, is helpful for people that are either just coming to Japan to hike Mount Fuji and they don't really know how to get around, or if you just want someone to do all the work for you, which is okay. So that concludes our pros. We only had three, <laughs> so unfortunately we actually have more cons. Yeah. So let's start the cons. <laughs> Con number one. Meeting location. Now this con is, it's kind of petty, but um, at least for us, we would have preferred to have met at Shinjuku bus terminal. It's centrally located, easy to find, right in the heart of Shinjuku. And that's where we thought it was. So when we left the morning of to go to the bus, we went there first thinking, oh, that's where it's at. Unfortunately, it was about a 10 to 15 minute walk further from there. It was like the next to a building on the, on the street. There was no actual bus terminal. It was just side of the road. So there was nothing in the email or the website that described where we were meeting. So I wish that they had been a little more clear and just made it a little easier um, to find. Con number two. Our bus experience. We booked through Willer Express, but we did not take a Willer Express bus to get to Fuji, which was kind of weird, but the bus experience overall was not very good. There wasn't a lot of leg room in the bus. There weren't any armrests in the seats so if you're sitting next to a stranger you're gonna get to know them real quickly there is also no wi-fi on the bus and no nope. charging yeah, outlets and no charging outlets and no bathroom if it was a shorter bus ride this would not have been a big deal but because we went on a holiday weekend there was a lot of city traffic so our normally two hour bus ride from Shinjuku to Mount Fuji, or to the fifth station, 
took five hours. Yeah, the, the bus wasn't terrible itself. Yeah. It was just like a third party bus that you would like rent if yeah. you were taking like a school group or something. Mm -hmm. I just expected better being that it was Willer Express. Right. We would take the Willer Express buses that are notorious for being clean, comfortable, high tech. And this was not the case. Yeah. yeah. We got there. So, hey. Yeah. We got there. We got there. <laughs> Con number three. Sleeping conditions. So if you watched our other videos of Mount Fuji, Fuji, Mount Fuji day one in particular, at the end of the video, we'll have a link right here to that video. You'll see that we slept in kind of really small cramped sleeping conditions. Yeah. We slept in a small, very small room with yeah. 10 other strangers. It was very small, very tight. You had a sleeping bag and a little bean bag below, and that was it. Sleeping on the floor, it's just Japanese style. That yeah. we knew, you know, we knew that was gonna be the case. And then on top of that, we came with a group of nine of us together. We wanted to be with our friends, but they didn't make any exceptions, any sort of accommodations for our, our needs. They just yeah. put us with a bunch of strangers. We didn't book together, it's our only downside, so they could use that as an excuse not to put us together. But I mean, come on, you could have tried a little bit harder. Looking up at some of the other bunks, there were some bunks with only four people in them, so... Yeah, they weren't all full, so yeah. it was like, you could have moved a few people around, it wouldn't have been that big right. a deal, because most groups were only two to three people. Yeah. So for us to be nine, we were one of the biggest, if not the biggest, in our yeah. group. Just put us together and then put two other people or three other people with us. Yeah, so. it's Japan. Con number four. The meals. This is a hard one because we did stay at the eighth station, which is, I believe, is the last station it with is. Mountain Huts. It is, yeah. So I can see how getting food up to the huts would be difficult. I mean, I'm pretty sure they use horses to like bring equipment and food um, and if anybody gets hurt they, they use the horses as well but the meals were just really really bad and we started to wonder like what were we paying for with our tour how much did we pay for this tour it was like 250 I think yeah I mean that's not cheap for dinner we got this little bento with rice and this like hamburger, hamburger patty and some curry. beef curry but it was just kind of gross and the only reason why we ate it is because we had been hiking all day yeah. and we were just starving but it was just i don't know it was just very disappointing breakfast was worse yeah breakfast was even worse so i was kind of disappointed with dinner and then breakfast came and it was a, a bento again but the rice was cold um there was also fish that was cold the whole thing was a cold. whole the whole thing was cold yeah, but it wasn't like refrigerated cold it was just no. just room temperature yeah. cold then again someone else had ordered like some ramen from the hut that we were staying in and they said that wasn't very good either so it might just be the mountain huts i'm not sure if willer has any control over this right um but it was disappointing it was a disappointing part of our tour <laughs> however they did give us matcha kit kats at the base of the mountain we could take up so yeah there's that and they gave us one bottle of water each once we got to the eighth station so thanks willer con number five helmets. helmets so at the base of the mountain at the fifth station our tour guides gave us these ugly big clunky blue helmets <laughs> like construction zone helmets that we had to take up with us from the fifth station all the way to the top of the mountain but what made this worse is that we were the only group, the only other people hiking the entire mountain that we saw that had these ugly blue helmets. And the reason? Because we would need them. Where? Just about at the summit of the mountain. All right, Caleb, what did you just add to your outfit? Climb up Fuji's not official. So you have one of these bad boys. Yes. A helmet. I'm ready to go. So we had to hike with them all the way up and then wear them for like a half hour stretch and then you could take them off again. They weren't particularly heavy, but no. they were kind of just bothersome, just clumsy, unnecessary, especially when there were people around us. Yeah. Another instance that this really bothered me was at the top or you know, in that helmet zone. So we've got the helmets on and I wanted to take a picture. So I took the helmet off and our tour guide came over and told me to put the helmet back on. But I'm like, I just want to take a quick picture. What's the big deal? It's going to take yeah. five seconds. It's not like we were in an area where like foreign rocks could have fallen down. Like we were close to the edge. Yeah. 
So it, it there was, was no reason. It was on. Yeah, there were people as like as they have helmets on. There were people walking around us with no helmets on. Yeah, and I got hit in the head with someone's helmet. I was walking behind one of my friends, and they like stopped abruptly, and like the helmet like swung and like hit me in the head. So. Like, I could have been concussed by the helmet. I suppose that we had to bring the helmets for insurance purposes. Yeah. I mean, that's the only reason why. Yeah. Willer probably has some sort of insurance mm -hmm. policy where we, we have to be protected or whatever. Con number six. Mandatory onsen stop. This one kind of sounds a little weird, and it doesn't really bother us so much as it might bother other um, tour guests. Mm -hmm. But on your way back, after you've hiked down the mountain, Willer Express makes a stop at an onsen, which is the natural hot spring bath. And this was great for us. We actually enjoyed this part of it because after that long hike, it was nice to kind of, kind of sit and yeah. soak and use the shower facilities and stuff. But the fact that it's required and it's like a two hour stop does kind of put a little damper on it, especially if you have other arrangements or you just want to get back to your hotel or wherever if you're staying in Tokyo. They should make it optional, you know, yeah. stop, drop some people off, and then the rest can continue on. I think if actually, if it was optional, we probably would have passed on it. Yeah. Because two hours is kind of a long stop for it. The onsen that they used is probably used by a lot of tour groups because yeah. there were a lot of buses pulling up, dropping off large groups. So it was a very busy onsen as well. They had some meal facilities, which was nice, but just the fact that it was mandatory and you can't really get out of it, they're stopping no matter what, was kind of a, I could see being kind of a pain. Mm -hmm. Especially some Westerners that don't want to use the public baths because you have to get naked. So, you know, yeah. take it for what it is. This brings us to our final con and the biggest of all of the cons. Mm. When you go on a tour, this is the one thing you don't want to happen. Annoying tour guides. <laughs> when we first got on our tour bus, you know, spirits were, spirits were high. We were so excited. We were excited. We were ready to hike Mount Fuji. And we met our tour guides and they seemed super nice. Just kind of, you know, really helpful and ready to get us up to the summit. But we quickly realized after we started the hike that they had their own time agenda and they were not going to let any hiker ruin that. They were very pushy, made us feel rushed the whole time from the t time we started to the time we came back. It was non-stop, rush, 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 go, yes. go, go, go. You, we can't stop, take a picture, we gotta keep moving. And they kept saying, you know, walk slow, walk slow, take deep breaths, but if you stopped for like one second, for like a water break, you would get yelled at. We bought walking sticks, um, and at each mountain hunt they have these stamps that they brand on the walking stick. So, of course, we wanted each stamp, so every time we would stop, they would yell at us. At one point, they told us that we had wasted two hours because we had stopped for 10 extra minutes. By stopping for these 10 minutes, yeah. it's going to cost us an extra two hours of climbing time. Yeah. Is their rationale. It just made us feel bad for like trying to enjoy the hike. Yeah. So I honestly just think that they forgot what it was like to hike Fuji for the very first time. I think maybe combined they had climbed it over 200 times. It's a lot of times to hike this mountain. So I think they were just ready to get up and then get back down. The worst part of the whole experience was the morning sunrise. We get to the top. And we get there a little bit early, so we have time to relax. We kind of walk around the top of the mountain. We're kind of checking out some of the shops, and we, we find ourselves a nice little spot on the edge of the mountain. We set up our camera, and the, the sun hasn't quite risen yet. You can see it kind of breaking through the clouds, and we're, we got the perfect shot. It's maybe 15 minutes to go till sunrise, and Yamabushi, our tour guide, comes over and says, okay, it's time to go. And we're like, uh, Hi. what? But he justifies it by saying, I've got a better spot just a little bit further down. Okay, you got a better spot, you're the tour guide. So we start walking down, and now the sun is now coming up. Now it's breaking through, now it's peak sunrise time. Mm -hmm. And he's not stopping, we're, we're going down the mountain. Just watch this clip, and you'll see. Again, let's go again, okay? Let's go, let's take a picture, really. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sir. We will take our time to take a photo, okay? Okay? We, I we want to. do it at the summit, I, though. Uh, uh, you don't. You didn't take a photo. Why? We were waiting for the sun. No, we had to leave. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. 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 There we go again. Yeah, please for me. Don't be rich. Don't be rich. Don't be rich. Yeah, don't be rich. Don't be rich.
We were the only people, the only group going mm -hmm. down the mountain at this point. Everyone else is either at the top or is finishing, you know, the last little yeah. bit to get to the top. After we got back down to the aid station, we had our cold breakfast and then we decided to start making our way back down to the fifth station. We ended up being the very first people back down to the fifth station and we had to wait, I don't know, it was like three hours. Two or three hours, yeah. Or, three or, hours. We didn't have, we, we got down to the bottom before everyone else, but there was nothing really to do. I mean, we'd already kind of like seen the shops yeah. and whatnot, but it was kind of like, great, I'm so glad we got to the bottom. We rushed to get to the bottom so that we could wait. Basically, the fact that our tour guides rushed us really put a damper on the trip and really kind of put a bad taste in our mouths. Yeah. We were just kind of grumpy and it just, it didn't help climbing back down when we were upset that we had missed what we went up the mountain for. Okay travelers, that concludes our list of pros and cons to doing a tour with Willer Express. This of course is our opinion only, um, does not reflect hiking Mount Fuji and probably doesn't reflect most of the opinions and thoughts of a lot of other hikers. So just take this with a grain of salt. This just happened to be our tour with the guides that they gave us. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we make new videos every Tuesday and Friday. So thank you for watching and we will see you next time.